Coops master class let's continue with our discussion of asphyxial death and the topic will be strangulation so strangulation is constriction of neck by a ligature without suspension of the body when there is suspension it will become hanging so when there is an absence of this suspension we are calling it as strangulation okay the force constricting the neck is an external force and obviously not the weight of the victim now the neck is constricted by means of either a ligature material obviously called ligature strangulation if fingers are used we call it throttling or manual strangulation if a bamboo stick is used it's known as bans dola if the elbow is used to strangulate a person it is called mugging okay and when a thin ligature cord is used it is called as garroting so when you use the elbow it's called mugging and when a thin ligature cord is used we call it garroting now let's proceed to ligature strangulation the neck is compressed by ligature with multiple rounds around it and no knot is formed in this unlike hanging in ligature strangulation there is no knot around the neck okay the ligature mark is typically transverse and mostly present below the thyroid gland and it is completely present all around the neck the skin under the ligature mark will show contusion and hemorrhage unlike in hanging where it shows pallor right so here in ligature strangulation there is contusion and hemorrhage of the skin okay direction of ligature is horizontal or usually horizontally oblique and it is seen crossing over to the opposite side so you can see the ligature marks and intensive congestion in ligature strangulation now let's talk about the direction of ligature mark it depends on the position of the assailant and the victim at the time of the crime that is during strangulation it will be horizontally oblique if the victim was in lying down position okay horizontally oblique and it will be completely horizontal when both victim and assailant are in standing posture and it will be oblique if the victim was sitting and the assailant was standing or if the victim was dragged from behind you can easily understand if the person is standing behind and using a thin strand to ligature the uh, neck of the victim obviously it will be oblique like this because he is using an upward force okay then there is petechiae and congestion and the margins of the ligature mark will be reddished ecchymosed and base will be pale please make a note of this point then the pressure exerted on the neck by ligature produces imprint abrasion okay the ligature material pressure exerted by it causes an imprint ab abrasion now let's look at manual strangulation the neck is compressed by one or both the hands of the assailant okay when the neck is compressed by two palms it is obviously known as palmar strangulation okay now what are the findings externally there are fingernail scratches and marked congestion on the face okay also there is this six penny bruise we have learnt about it in our previous class then petechial hemorrhages are seen in the facial skin and conjunctiva in case of throttling only by one hand bruise marked by thumb on one side can be seen and four fingers obviously will be on the other side of the neck so when there's throttling by one hand thumb imprint is present on one side four fingers on other side of the neck so you can see these are the fingernail marks petechial hemorrhages all over the face and tardio spots what are these these are subpleural petechial hemorrhages all of these are seen in manual strangulation now let's proceed inwards the internal findings there is extensive soft tissue contusions the underlying subcutaneous soft tissues and neck muscles are seen contused okay there is severe contusion then there is signs of extravasation and bruising where do you see this typically at the tracheal rings and posterior pharyngeal wall usually there is no dribbling of saliva from the angle of mouth unlike the antemortem hanging and fracture dislocation of cervical vertebra is rare in this cases okay in strangulation there is no fracture dislocation of cervical vertebra and the hyoid bone fracture is more common that is both adduction and abduction fracture can be seen in this form of injury the adduction fracture it occurs due to throttling the broken fragment has an inward angulation okay so due to it is due to an inward force exerted by the fingers of the assailant there is an inward angulation in adduction fracture however in abduction fracture it occurs in 
ligature strangulation and hanging also there is an outward angulation okay the broken piece of the bone has an outward angulation that is why we are calling it as abduction fracture okay are we clear with this concept so you can see here the fracture of left superior horn of thyroid cartilage following strangulation